previously. recently. This Wicked Cool Stuff is called natural latex. It's uh, something, you know, I don't think about too often. I think about wood and sustainability and all these ways that I'm used to working, but this is not one of them. And I'm super glad to have found Deborah over at DIY Natural Bedding, who um, hipped me to latex and donated this to the truck. Thank you so much, Deborah. So I'll tell you very quickly, and I'm gonna give you a link to her website where there's all sorts of information about how this is made and the sustainability of it and whatnot, because it's super, super interesting. But basically, you know, most latex that we see in our lives nowadays is, has some oil-based stuff that's mixed into it, maybe it's all, maybe it's part. Um, but this is 100% natural latex, which is, uh, it's not like a lifeblood or a sap of a tree, but it's inside the rubber tree, as well as many other plants, including dandelions and milkweed. But it's primarily harvested from um, farmed rubber trees, and they tap them to get the latex out. They can usually get about 30 years of uh, lifespan out of these trees where they tap them and the tree continues to survive and grow, so they're not killing anything to do it, and make this latex. This is the way rubber was made for, for a long, long time until oil and petroleum started getting mixed into it and whatnot. It's a little bit more money, of course, but it's supposed to last a lot longer as well.
It's almost like it was made for this. The original idea was this, to have this cushion attached to a French cleat that I could hang on the wall so that way I could take it off the wall, set it down on the ground and have like a, a you know, backing pad to it to make it, keep it solid and rigid. And so I, I told Carla this idea when we were brainstorming how to do this and uh, she suggested sewing like a strip along the back that I could slide, so I could slide it over a pole. And I was like, well, I don't really want to do that. I'm going to have this whole board. I was like, why don't we just do this Velcro thing? and just Velcro it on the board, you know, I, I said that'll, that'll be plenty. And if we keep it at a slight angle, it is, but once it's perfectly vertical, it sort of starts to hang here and get a little, little funky looking. Um, so I think that I should have listened to the expert and not come up with my own stupid ideas, <laughs> but we can fix this. It's a great thing about making stuff. You can always fix it. I have this pretty heavy uh, upholstery fabric that I bought uh, at a discount store at some point in time. I don't know why, but I have a long enough piece of it and it should be heavy enough to what I can do is just sew a channel. So just sew a U-channel on so this way I can slide a piece of wood down the channel, but leave a little bit of it sticking out here so I can just run a screw. I know this might just look like a bad sewing job to you, but to me, this is a huge milestone because learning to sew has been on my list for years. And quite frankly, I'm intimidated by it. Uh, just like anybody that's afraid to try anything new, I have those fears with sewing. And it would have been very easy for me to have sent this back to Carla or to have my father-in-law, who's a little more experienced, help me. But I decided to just try it myself. And I'm very pleased with the fact that I did that. And I'm pleased with the results, not because they're beautiful, but because they will work. I learned a ton. And the only way you can learn is by jumping in and trying stuff. Uh, you can sit and read books and watch videos all day. But really, if you want to learn something, you got to go mess it up. <laughs> no one's going to see this. It's on the back and uh, the lines are pretty darn straight. Uh, I made a few mistakes, but I think it's going to work. Let's find out.
didn't work. Dirty feet off it. You're right, we could live in this. Except we'd have to bring a little animal trailer along for the guinea pigs. Yeah, we just drag it on the back doing 70 miles an hour down the highway. <laughs> bench is like a Swiss army knife. It does a million things for me in this truck. The first and most obvious thing it does is it provides a place to sit. Um, you can see it's plenty long, so I could have three or four people easily sitting on this trying out guitars while I'm in store mode. Besides covering the wheel wells, it provides storage for me. I have a long storage section there that can hold my longest bass guitar cases as well as most of my PA system. And I got another spot here over the wheel well for just all those little odds and ends you need to kind of carry with you to keep them tucked away. Uh, it's great having this massive amount of storage that I can kind of hide everything. And then the stuff that I can't fit and can't hide in there, I can put on either side of it and strap it down because I was able to put these tie-in hooks onto it to make it so when I'm driving everything is secured. Besides all that, these two big cushions act as like sound absorption so if there are a couple people in here trying out guitars it'll help keep the volume down and keep it from getting like echoey and unwieldy but besides all that I actually have two sleeping services now uh, I figure if I do take this truck on some overnight trips and get outside of my local area I'm probably not gonna want to park it in a Motel 6 parking lot with a big sign that basically says steal my guitars written on the side of it so I'll take it to campgrounds and whatnot instead this top pad is a, a bed unto itself and then the one on the wall is on a French cleat so it can get pulled off and put on the floor for a second person to also sleep in the truck somewhat comfortably. I could not have done this without Deborah over at DIYNaturalBedding.com. Thank you so much for your support and I especially couldn't have done this without Carla. Um, she came up with this design. This is all her doing and so I'm super glad that I found Carla and that she was willing to help me out with this project. Um, but I'm also proud of myself for going in and sewing that sleeve on the back and kind of getting over my fear of trying something. So while I could never make a, well, I'm not going to say never, but I could probably not make a slip cover like this for many years. Um, I feel confident to maybe try some other smaller sewing projects of my own in the future. Thanks to seeing what Carla can do, uh, what I learned from her and what I learned from just not being afraid to try it on my own. I didn't want to put those buttons on the back in case you didn't notice I was doing everything I could to help this sit properly on the wall without sagging and you know Carla had told me like oh if you just pop some buttons in it it'd be fine <laughs> but I was trying to avoid it unfortunately I had to do that I just don't care for the look as much as the flat look but it did make all the difference in the world now if you also want to learn about sewing make sure you go over to Carla's YouTube channel there will be a link here where she has a video about making these whole slip covers and she actually made a mistake in the process and she solved it um, it's a fantastic video to learn Learn about sewing larger and more complicated things. So go check that out. Check out the rest of the video series. And thank you all very much for watching. I'm gonna roll. Maybe I'll take a nap. I don't know. I'm just gonna take a nap. Be good. <laughs>